Hello friends, let's look at another technical indicator in Python, the unbalanced volume indicator. Welcome to the Viral Mail Show and another market analysis hands-on in Python. My name is Manuel Amunategui. This talk will be uh, filed at the viralmail.com page under Channels, the Channels tab, and Finance. There you'll see all my other videos on finance and including most of them have a, a code, a, no, a Python notebook uh, with it and also uh, very interesting data sets. So if you're interested in the markets, if you're interested in in using uh, Python to explore the, the you know uh, interesting data, you know, I recommend you check these out this video will also have a code and the code the link to the the, the, the notebook extract is in the description uh, in the middle of the page you'll see uh, you know you can sign up for my newsletter please do so so you know what I'm up to and also you know if I have specials going and definitely you know uh, subscribe to the channel and give it some thumbs up it's a uh, thumbs up for me is very important because that means people like the material and also like the topic and which will encourage me to make more of that specific topic okay so uh, let's look at the uh, unbalanced volume indicator, which is also for short uh, goes by OBV using the Python programming language. And I think it's really useful to, to check out the, the to do it in Python because this allows you to kind of start with the basis, the way it was meant to be or the way it was designed, and then you can you know, extend it however you want, right? You're only limited by your own imagination. Uh, so here is kind of a final look at what we're going to do. Um, it's, uh, I really like it, uh, I really like this indicator because it uh, includes volume. The other indicators we've looked in the past, the MACD and the RSI, only look at price. This one looks at volume. So it's another piece of data out there that's very interesting. Hopefully, uh, it's assuming you have reliable volume. Not all products have a reliable volume. So if you scroll up at the top of the, th of the page, you will see I have a little, you know, a little history. It was created in the 60s by Joseph Granville. So it's been around for a while. And I also talk about the formula, how to calculate the OBV. But I'm going to jump to uh, Wikipedia, which has uh, the unbalanced volume page, which has a great formula. It's just a lot easier to uh, understand what it does. So OBV is simply a running value. You know, trade by trade, depending on the time frame you're looking. If it's tick, it'll be by tick. If it's uh, if it's uh, daily, it'll be by day. Uh, here we're looking at daily data, right? End of day data. Uh, the OBV is basically this running value. So if the close of today is bigger than yesterday's close or whatever pre previous period of close, meaning the markets are going up, then you take uh, the current volume and you add it to the running. OBV value. If on the other way it's flipped, the markets are going down, you you, you subtract the current volume, uh, you, you take the OBV and you subtract the current volume, right? And if for some bizarre reason this is rare in the markets we're looking at, the close of uh, this period is the same as the last period, then you do nothing, right? You don't add the volume, you ignore it. So um, uh, also, uh, we, uh, we, let's get some data. Let's start by getting some data. Uh, I'm going to get the uh, Russell uh, 2000. I think it's an interesting data set. It is carrot R-U-T, and you go to finance.yahoo.com, and you'll see it's right there. Once it comes up, uh, hit the historical tab, click that, click the date range, get as much data as you can by clicking the max button, hopefully you can see it, the done button, apply, and download. And this will download this file onto your local machine, which is basically uh, data from, uh, we saw from 1987 to today, of the uh, Russell 2000, and you'll have a date, open, high, low, close, and adjusted close, and volume. So quite a lot of good information to work with. Um, what's uh, uh, this has you know reliable um, reliable volume data right that's what you want uh, things traded on big exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange like um, uh, you know the uh, or, or, or gold or oil these things usually have reliable uh, volumes for example one of my favorite uh, data sets is the VIX the fear index uh, on Yahoo Finance, unfortunately, you don't have you don't have volume. You have to either use the volume, the the options, or the futures to get volume, or an ETF that has representative volume. You want to make sure that if it's a if it's a subset of the data, you want to make sure it's representative of the big picture. That's important. Okay, so now we have this data. It's going to be downloaded on your local drive. Make sure it's in the same folder where you're running uh, this Jupyter notebook, or you point to it. I have a path. I'll show you how I do it. So let me start running things in memory now that we know what the OBV is. So here is the uh, you know I like to. To have uh, all my data into a special uh, folder, so I have I create a path to it, and uh, when I open the data, I just pass I pass this path before the 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 name of the file. In this case, is uh, carrot rut.csv. So I load this in memory in my Jupyter notebook. I cast the date to a date time. It comes out as an object outside of CSV. We want it as a date so that Matplotlib knows how to handle it. We are also uh, only going to keep the date, the adjusted close, and the volume, meaning that we're going to get rid of the open, high, low, and close. The adjusted close is better than a regular close because if there are div dividends or any adjustments overnight, it will be reflected in this column. It won't be in the close. So that's why we're going to work just with a date, the adjusted close, and the volume. We need the volume. 
And I'm also gonna rename the adjust to close to close just because it's simpler to do. Uh, finally, we're gonna sort things. Whenever you're working with moving averages, in this case, we're gonna be working with a weighted moving average. You wanna make sure the, the moving average starts from the oldest data and works its way forward, not the other way around. So always uh, sort by date in ascending order. Get in the habit of doing that, that's good. Um, and also print the minimum and the maximum date just to see what kind of, da what kind of range we have. And I, when I run it here, we can see we have data from 1987 to today, which is that confirms what we had when we were looking at on uh, on Yahoo Finance. Okay, so uh, now let's, I create a function uh, to kind of you know uh, abstract out the, the, the this OBV call, and it's super simple, uh, like we've seen. And I'm also basing it off of uh, a GitHub repo, uh, loosely based on it. But there's some, but I, I recommend you check it out because they have some other great financial functions if if you're interested in that uh, uh, at this link. So I'm calling it uh, uh, on balance volume. You pass it a data frame. You pass it um, the the name of the uh, of, of your price column, the name of the volume column, right? Because we need both price and volume, and we also a period for your uh, for the uh, the moving average. So we're going to be returning two things: uh, a list for the uh, in, 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 it's actually a, a data frame series for uh, the OBV and the data frame series for the uh, uh, the weighted the exponentially weighted moving average of the OBV, and you'll, you'll see how that works. In terms of the function call, it's super simple. You, you take your data frame and we're gonna iterate through it. We're basically gonna loop through uh, the data frame and we're gonna simply gonna do exactly what we saw in this formula. We're gonna say, is the current close bigger than the previous close? If it is, then you know here is our, our running OBV, you add the volume. If the current close is smaller than the previous close, meaning the marks are going down, you take you know your current uh, uh, OBV and we subtract uh, the current volume. Is that simple? And if it's equal, no, you do nothing. Here it is one more call where we're taking the, we're calling the uh, the EWM, the moving, the weighted moving average, and we're taking in this case a 21 period, which is what it's defaulted, but you could tweak it out, you could play around with it, and we return basically the OBV and the OBV EMA back, and that's that. It's that simple, right? So fairly straightforward. Uh, let me put that in memory and let me run it. Once you run it, you see uh, we had a date close volume, and now it returns a date close volume with the OBV and the OBV EMA 21, right? That's that is fairly straightforward. And let's plot it. Let's do a chart of it. So here, you know, this is what it's all about. And I would recommend you look at it through uh, many different uh, products, financial products, and also different um, uh, periods of the market. If it's you're just looking at it at one long bullish leg, you're not going to see much interesting things. If it's just one long bearish leg, you won't see much interesting things. If it's trending much, it could be interesting, but you want to see kind of a mixture. And that's when it becomes interesting. And just to kind of get familiar to see, is this something I can work with? Is this useful for, for, for the type of, of trading or the type of analysis that I'm doing? So here, you know, we have um, uh, seven months of data of the Russell 2000. In black, we have the price, as you can see. Uh, uh, there are two scales, right? This is the price scale, and this is the OBV scale. So actually, let me run through this code just so we understand the scaling system. So uh, we're going to plot it, right? So remember, we called our function. We return this new data set called res for results, uh, which com which comprises of these columns. So now we're going to plot it. So I call um, I create a figure and an axis by calling uh, matplotlib subplots, and I size it so it's nicely sized for the Jupyter notebook. And our first ac y axis, uh, the default y axis, I'm putting the close price. I'm going to do it in black. So nothing much going on here. I'm going to call. I'm going to put a legend, and I'm, I'm going to do the grid. I like to see the grid on the charts. I think it looks good. It helps to uh, uh, see you know what price we're dealing with. And more interestingly, I'm then calling, I'm creating a second y axis. So now we have two y axes. You can have as many as you want by calling the ax.twinx and assigning it to ax2. So that gives us a second axis. Whatever you do after this will be on this new axis. And here I'm plotting both the OBV and the OBV EMA21 because they're on the same scale. So remember, this is on a volume scale, but it's a tricky volume scale. It can be a positive volume or it can be a negative volume, right? It can rotate around zero. If it's a market that's tanking, eventually it'll be a negative number. If it's going up, it'll be a positive number. Keep that in mind. It could be complicated. Um, so uh, we have both of those, and you know the the, the OBV is in blue, and the uh, the 21 period of the OBV is in red. Okay, let's go back to the chart now that we we you know we went through that. Uh, so in black we have the price. This is the price Y scale, and in blue you have the OBV, and in red the 21 period of the OBV, and this is the uh, OBV scale, the uh, on balance volume. So. Looking at it, you know, at a high level, we're seeing, you know, uh, a nice strong bullish leg, and both the price and the volume are very similar in a lot of ways. 
Uh, they're just on different scales, but they move kind of very similarly. Things become more interesting here when things move slightly differently. So um, uh, here we see, you know, a lot of volume, uh, a, a, a lot of positive volume. Keep in mind that it's different. Uh, regular volume and OBV volume is different, right? Because uh, regular volume going down means there's no buyers. There's no there's no action, right? Nobody's nobody's trading this product anymore. Uh, OBV going down strong means there's a lot of action, but it's just negative. It's, it's pulling the stock down or whatever it is, right? That's very different, right? Uh, uh, if it's just flat and not doing much, then that means it's, that there's little trading going on. If it goes down strong, uh, that means that there is a lot of trading going. It's just not in the, it's not in the, 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 a different direction, right? So just keep in mind, right? Here we're seeing strong OBV, positive meaning there's there's people are buying it and it's uh, this this kind of uh, if you want accumulation going on in the markets and the markets are moving accordingly here is interesting is that we have one high of the obv and we're doing a higher high than the previous one yet the price doesn't seem to be following so this is a first clue something funny is going on right here right when you're having a higher obv but the price doesn't follow it could mean the trend is getting tired or there may be a reversal happening and then you see the obv is kind of not making any new highs but there are higher highs going on. And this also kind of symbolizes that something, uh, there's a disconnect going on, right? And uh, then you start seeing this market tanking. Also here we're seeing that, you know, uh, the, the OBV is making kind of a lower low, lower highs, right? And, and, and lower lows. It could mean that either the markets are getting tired or we could be, you know, close to reversal, right? We'll st we don't know because uh, that's what we're looking at. So again, in hindsight, it's easy. The best way to use this tool is to look at a lot of historical data and analyze it and learn from it. Both, you can either use the blue line and the red line, the, the moving average, or do divergences. I like to do divergences. Whenever I see new highs that are not followed through, through that something funny is going on, right? That's when you know you should you should be you should be cautious, right? I wouldn't trade directly off this, but it definitely uh, allows you to say, okay, this is this is like trend as usual, right? Higher highs and the market go higher. You say, okay, we're still in the bullish leg. That's how we'd use it. Uh, another way to look at it, which uh, we're going to do right now, is we're going to create a weekly weekly data. So we have to aggregate the data into weekly data, and it's going to allow us to simplify the market moves. And the OBV is it's very interesting to, to, to look at the OBV and in, in, in this kind of simplified, slowed down market. And it's something that's very easy to do in trading packages. Unfortunately, in Python, we got to do a little bit more work. So uh, it's still very simple. Uh, we're going to create a variable called time grouper. We're going to take a copy of our data, a deep copy so that we can you know, torture it and not worry about the original data. The original data will stay intact. We have to, uh, we're gonna be working with uh, the PD groupers and uh, group buys, right? These are two functions in Pandas that are very powerful. Uh, in this case, to do uh, um, uh, group, to do uh, time-based groups, you need to have, uh, uh, the index has to be a date. So we're gonna, we're gonna set the index of our new data frame as the date. And this will allow that the, the PD grouper to group it accordingly. So we're going to basically call, we're going to get the open of, the, of, of our week. So we're going to say we want a weekly, a weekly time frame. So right now we know the data is daily, so we want weekly. So the best way to do that is to group it by week. So we're going to call the PD grouper and we're going to say group it by week. And it's going to take every week, it's going to clump it into one group. We're going to take the first price of that group. It's going to be basically the opening price of the week. The last price, so it'll be nth one, nth zero, sorry, and nth negative one will be the last price of that week, right? So now we have the open and the close of that new period of the week, right? So it's pretty cool to do. All you have to do is call the PD grouper by and, and, and you know group it by whatever frequency you want. In that case, we want week and get that first value and then call the group by function. Same thing for the, the last value, PD grouper by, uh, you know, by week to get the last value and group it by, and you get the, you know, you basically get the close. And we're going to do something similar for the volume. The volume we want to get, we don't want to get the first or last or the aggregate, we want to get a total, the sum of the volume. So we're saying, you know, group my data by a week, get the, vo get the, get the total volume and sum it. And then, you know, we group it by, by sum. Like that's going to give us for that one week, we're going to get a total sum of volume. And finally, uh, we're not using that here, but you can also do the high lows by calling the NP min, NP max, similar, you know, uh, combining the, the PD grouper function with, the, with the, the group by function. Then we, you know, we kind of clean this up. We uh, reassign our open, close, and volume back to uh, our original data set. And when we look at it, when we, you know, when we um, uh, call, call the tail of it, here we're seeing, now we have a date, an open, a high, low, close, and a volume. And if you look at the dates, they're all, they're all separated by a week, right? You could very simply do, if you want to do by month, it's very easy. You change the grouper by M. 
And now you'll notice, right, it's my month, right? We have, uh, looks like February, March, April, right? But we want weeks. Let me go back to W. And you could do two weeks, you could do three weeks, just add a number two to the W, a two W. It's very simple. You could do yearly as well. You, because this is daily data, we can't go, in, you know, you can't reverse it into minutes, right? You can't reverse engineer, uh, you know, a large unit into a small unit. That you can't do. Uh, but it can aggregate. Uh, and here it is, right? So now we have weekly data. So basically, we started with uh, daily data, and we, 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 we transformed the data, we grouped it into chunks, weekly chunks, and, we, and most importantly, we also uh, got the sum uh, total of that volume, of, of the volume for that week. So here, we were just looking at, remember, we were just looking, I cut the date by, uh, when I called our unbalanced function, I cut it by uh, 2019. I just wanted to see uh, one year, because Anything uh, more is going to be hard to read. But now because we, we, we reduce our data into weekly, we can see a lot more data. So now I'm going to pass this new data that we just passed. Make sure I ran it in memory. Good. Now I'm going to say, give me everything from 2017. So now we're going to see a couple of years. Same thing as before. You pass the, your closing, you know, your, your, your close column and the volume column, column, which is still, this is still the same thing as before, except now we're looking at weekly data. And let's run this. So now we have an OBV and OBV EM21 for our weekly data. Let's plot it. This is very interesting. So as you notice, right, uh, even though we're looking at a lot more data as we were before, it's a lot less jaggedy as the, the that one year, right? Let me scroll back. You see how jaggedy it is? This is a daily data, and this is the weekly data because we simplified it. We cleaned it, and now it's aggregated by week. So there's some, there's some interesting things going on here. Uh, for starters here, which is very interesting to me, is we're seeing some, the unbalanced volume is doing some very strong upwards moves. Small downwards, very small, very small, small, very strong upwards, very strong upwards. So by reducing it to a week, we can start seeing the strength of that week. But what's interesting here is this is the first time, this is the biggest down move we've seen uh, since 2017, right? So we're looking at some, some, a change. If if you just saw you know if 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 you just saw you know if if it was if it were right around here right you didn't see anything else there was no there's no real indication that we're gonna go uh, that this is gonna keep tanking right because it's easy in hindsight but it does give you a warning it's saying wait a minute this is the first time I'm seeing such a strong downwards leg all the other ones were a lot weaker so uh, uh, in my opinion it would be uh, I would call this you know. Uh, um, uh, the trend, this bullish trend, would be slowing down, right? You can't really say anything else, you know, without you know using other data or having a crystal ball, right? Uh, but then again, then you see this huge down leg. What's interesting also is it's doing this down leg on not much, on, on not not that strong of a volume. So it means that you know there's not that much participation downwards, uh, and, and it does it does it's confirmed afterwards by this strong up leg, right? So so uh, th this 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 part right here I thought was very interesting. Then again, we're doing uh, the OBV is doing higher highs right look at this one compare this one and uh the the uh the price can't keep up it's not doing higher highs so all this is interesting what does that mean does it, does it mean that you know we where the markets are going to tank down does it mean that it's going to go back up who knows right uh you, uh, this is still very bullish this this leg here this very strong upwards leg meaning that there was a lot of positive volume going in and you know, uh, uh, still made a higher high, uh, kind of disappointing that the price didn't follow through, but it's definitely something to watch. So that's basically it. Um, one last thing I'm going to show you is a different way of looking at it. Um, so instead of calling, if you want to, if you prefer to see the price and the uh, OBV in separate panes, usually this is how you would see it in a trading package. Uh, it's very easy to do. Instead of calling the ax.twinx function to have it in separate uh, panes, just simply call the first one and do plot show. And it will it will plot it in its own plot, and do build a second one right with the OBVs and do plot show, and like that it will give you two plots, two separate plots, right? So that's it. That's the OBV. Uh, before I end this video, I like plugging my books. I'm gonna plug this one, the little book of fundamental indicators, where we cover uh, a very important fundamental uh, um, data sets using Python. Kind of what we did here. Here we look at the spy, the spiders, uh, the S&P 500, which is kind of the barometer, the economic health of the world. We look at the VIX, the fear index. We look at the CPI, uh, the consumer price index. We look at the uh, the case Schiller for real estate. We look at bankruptcies, unemployment, all sorts of very interesting data that that that. that 
that you should be looking at to help you get a better grasp over what's going on around you in the financial world and also uh, allow you to get answers to your own questions and not always relying on the newspaper, on the TV, on the internet. You know, get the data. It's out there. It's free. And, you know, and get your own answers uh, with Python. And it's actually a lot of fun to do. Thank you.